Two lectures ago, I talked briefly about critical theory and mentioned that one of the most important strands of critical theory is feminism. In the late 20th and early 21st centuries, many women have challenged the male domination of art and what they saw as a male gaze that dominated and distorted artistic depictions of women and especially women's bodies. This artist used to be a college board favorite. The video clip that references it is a little outdated, but it introduces some important elements of feminist art. You'll see this work in several earlier Cindy Sherman self-portraits. So here's an old College Board essay question on this work. The artist overlaid a photograph of the head of a classically beautiful female sculpture with cut and pasted text that challenges the male gaze. Appropriates is a term you should know. It means borrows from other sources. You'll often hear the name, uh, the term applied to borrowing from other cultures. So for example, Picasso appropriated African art in Demoiselle d'Avignon. Here's what the College Board says in its scoring guide for this question. And by the way, the same analysis could really be applied to Cindy Sherman's Untitled Number 228 or Wangechi Mutu's Praying Mantra. Feminist art historical explorations of the male gaze, again I'm quoting, examine the asymmetrical power relationship between men and women in society to pause for translation into Russian. That means that men are the katos, remember Lenin, and women are the kavos. They simply don't have the same level of power. They tend to be acted upon rather than acting. In particular, to continue with the College Board analysis, feminists examine the ways women are viewed. Women are passive and thus robbed of agency that is, the ability to act and make decisions for themselves. In Kruger's work, which is technically a photograph, the profile of the woman passively invites the gaze, while the words actively deflect or return that gaze. Remember this painting from an earlier unit? It was actually commissioned by a Queen of England who wanted an accurate rendering of the gallery, but the work also captures this idea of the male gaze. Back in the same unit, we also contrasted the classic subject of the male gaze, Titian's Venus, with a 19th century courtesan who most decidedly gazes back. Uh, so is this just another, maybe more blatant example of the male gaze? After all, it's probably a man who's just walked in the door with Olympia. Or is this, in fact, a feminist painting? Is Monet delivering a feminist message? I think my answer would be both. In her so-called film stills, they aren't actually taken from real movies, Cindy Sherman poses herself in various stereotyped female roles. Like Barbara Kruger, she challenges the male gaze, but she does it by confronting the viewer directly with their own preconceptions and prejudices. Does that remind you of any other artists we've seen recently? Kara Walker also explores stereotypes by confronting us with them. In this work, Faith Ringgold pretty clearly challenges the Aunt Jemima stereotype. The Aunt Jemima that she portrays in this story quilt is a successful businesswoman. But what about these works from the French collection? Our heroine, Willa Marie Simone, makes it big in Paris, but she does it by submitting herself to the male gaze as an artist model. Paris in the 1920s welcomed African-American artists and musicians, especially jazz musicians, but they were viewed a little like Picasso's African masks. Exotic? Powerful, maybe a little dangerous, and distinctly the other. Something to be gazed upon, maybe even something to be possessed. Anyway, back to Cindy Sherman and our next required work. Here are some more of her photographic images, some of which you saw in the video. All of these, I think, make the point that Cindy Sherman sees women as constantly performing, living out roles expected of them by others. So, you all remember the story of Judith and Holofernes, right? The History Portrait series, like untitled film clips, is both homage and satire directed toward famous old paintings. I don't think there's one single painting that Cindy Sherman is imitating, but the Khan Academy reading mentions the similarity to Botticelli's women. So what similarities and differences do you see between these works? The clothing is very similar, although Botticelli's heroine seems to be wearing sandals on much smaller feet. The faces, likewise, are both demure, which I find rather odd given our heroine's bold and gruesome act. I actually think Cindy Sherman's expression is a little scary. 
maybe a trifle unhinged. As for differences, Botticelli's Judith is a dainty young Italian aristocrat. Remember that Florence had a sentimental attachment to Judith and also to David. Cindy Sherman's Judith is enormous. She also looks like she just came out of a costume store and did not max out her credit card. Khan Academy uses the adjectives tacky, chintzy, and cheap for her clothes and makeup, and it seems fair enough. So what do you th make of that Halloween mask, Holofernes? What point do you think the artist is making here? I'm going to flash a few more of her photographs juxtaposed, ah, that useful word again, with paintings that Cindy Sherman may or may not be imitating. This one, pretty clearly she's imitating. Here's Cindy as Bacchus next to Caravaggio's version, the sick Bacchus, which is also thought to be a self-portrait. That's Cindy Sherman on the left, Raphael's La Fornarina on the right. The woman in the painting was probably Raphael's lover, Margarita Ludi. At any rate, she's clearly meant to convey idealized female beauty. So how does Cindy Sherman play with this? Look closely at the photo. She's strapped on fake plastic breasts and a fake stomach. If you look at the shoulders, the joints are clearly exposed. So what points do you think she might be making about the female body? about artificial enhancements, and about the relationship between art and photography. Uh, I don't have answers to those questions, by the way, but I think the Judith photograph raises many of the same issues. If you have time, here's a short video clip of Cindy Sherman discussing why she photographs herself in all these roles. And now we turn to female artists who are more interested in exploring the body, and in the case of our first two artists, the female body in relationship to nature. Kiki Smith trained as an EMT as well as an artist, and her early work shows her fascination with human anatomy. Many of her works also focus on body fluids. Breast milk is shown here, also urine and menstrual blood. She often seeks to expose and break down social taboos, especially those that hide the working of the female body. In the mid-1990s, her artistic interest turned toward nature, and she discovered that drawing and etching helped her capture the delicate nature of feathers and fur. She also became more interested in iconography and symbolism attached to animals, and the role that animals play in fairy tales and in religious narratives. So you all recognize this fairy tale, right? Lying with Wolf with the wolf also has its origins in a narrative, sort of. I've put the artist's own description of her inspiration up on the slide. St. Genevieve was a young girl who lived in France in the last days of the Roman Empire. Her prayers as a teenage nun were credited with turning Attila the Hun away from Paris, and she remains the city's patron saint. I tried without success to find the work that Kiki Smith refers to on the uh, on the Louvre website, and as far as I can tell, the main association between St. Genevieve and wolves is the saint protected her sheep by keeping the wolves of Attila from the door. I may be missing something. But the story clearly resonated with Kiki Smith. Why do you think? Well, it's a story of female power, and it's a story of that power being used to bring about peace. Kiki Smith was raised a Catholic and continues to be very interested in both Catholic and Buddhist thought. She told one interviewer, my whole life I've wanted to believe in a God, find some kind of God that I could make a shrine to, but I can't. I never do. But clearly her Catholic upbringing has influenced Kiki Smith's art. If you have time, it would be interesting to stop and talk about this quote and how it might relate to other works we've studied in this course. So let me ask a question that I don't usually ask, and actually one that the College Board does not encourage you to ask or talk about in your essays. What do you think of this work? Do you like it? So here's why I asked. I have a confession to make. I find this work irritating. I realize that the artist is making a point about living in peace with nature and about female spiritual power. But I have a snarky reaction that this drawing is insulting to wolves and to women. Wolves are beautiful, deadly, fierce, and loyal but they are not cuddly. I'm all about women acting with power and confidence, but if one of my daughters decided she wanted to snuggle up with a wolf, I would schedule an appointment with a therapist. Okay, I've vented. Moving on, this artist is also exploring female power, but she puts her female figure into a very different relationship with nature. And why do I say that? Remember this image from our first week? 
A praying mantis is a female that devours mates after sex. But the insect imagery goes beyond ferocious female power. The word mantis derives from the Greek word for prophet or diviner. We actually spell the insect's name with an A, a reference to its stance, which some people think resembles prayer. Mantra is a religious chant, not an insect. So is this woman looking for dinner or is she looking for the meaning of life? Again, note that the title of this work spells praying with an E. Wangechi Mutu is a female artist from Kenya who now lives and works in New York. Her works are often described as cyborgs. So, science fiction fans, what is a cyborg? I'm going to read from a scholarly paper on her work. Sorry if that seems like a cop-out, but I'm going to admit freely that I find this work puzzling. Intriguing, but puzzling. So here we go. Wangechi Mutu's collages on paper and mylar, that's polyester film, the stuff balloon, uh, balloons and bouquets are made of, often present female figures composed of human, animal, object, and machine parts. Let me just interject, that's what cyborg means. Among these sources for her mismatched fragments and decorative patterns are pornographic, fashion, travel, and automotive magazines, in addition to colorful coffee table books on African art that are produced by and for Westerners. Mudu fuses an assortment of body parts and extremities with hand-drawn and painted elements. It's often the female body in an endless variety of new formations that she chooses to construct. In doing so, she provides a transcultural critique of the female persona as dramatized and represented in Western culture. So to recap, this work engages with gender roles and with ethnic and cultural stereotypes. Mudu is especially interested in the way black female bodies have been stereotyped and exploited. Again, a shout out to Kara Walker as well. But this female surely is equipped to fight back. Not that I'd want to mess with the horned woman on the right either. Here's a quote from the author. The work on the right is entitled Cancer of the Uterus, and it's actually a pathology diagram overlaid with glitter and a woman's eyes and lips. So how do these works combine, to use uh, the artist's own terms, the desired and the despised? So here's another intriguing quote from the artist and more collages by the artist that demonstrate female power, vulnerability, and stereotyping. The artist actually made a film starring one of her cyborg creatures. Let's watch part of a video in which she discusses the work and shows a little of what looks like a weird and wonderful movie. I'm going to stop here. Our next artist, Magdalena Avakanovitz, is also a female artist and also explores the human body. But as the title Androgyne Third suggests, her bodies are conspicuously neither male nor female. They are merely, if quite incompletely, human. So stay tuned. <laughs> 